chapter 5 of Nehemiah, the Bible says, And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Jews. For there was that said, We are our sons and our daughters are many. Therefore we take up the corn for them, that we may eat and live. Some also there were that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards and houses, that we might buy corn because of the draught. And there was also that said, We have borrowed money from the king's tribute that were upon our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children. And lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. And some of our daughters are brought under to bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. And I was very angry when I heard their cry in these words. Then I consulted with myself, and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them, He exact usury, every one of his brother. And I said a great assembly against them. And I said unto them, We, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. And will ye even sell your brethren? Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace, and found nothing to answer. Also, I said, It is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? I likewise and my brethren and my servants might exact of them money and corn. I pray you, let us leave off this usury. Restore, I pray you, to them even this day their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards and their houses. Also the hundredth part of the money and of the corn, the wine and the oil that ye exact of them. Then said they, we will restore them and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou saidest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Also I shook my lap and said, So God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise. Even thus be he shaken out and emptied. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. Amen. Amen. And we're thankful for that reading of the Lord's word. And if you've joined us on other programs before, if you're listening, the wall construction was, as we found out in the previous couple of programs, was halfway being built round now. And um, he completed that. And we saw last uh, Monday or Monday and Tuesday that when God is doing a work, his people will always face an opposition. Nehemiah faced the opposition of Sam Ballot and Tobiah. And his enemies were conspiring against him, trying to stop the work. And in fact, we found out um, on Tuesday with uh, our brother BJ Stagner that the building uh, was happening and the builders were there with their swords and their families were there protecting them. And so there was a real, real, real enmity to the work of God. And uh, we're so thankful that, uh, Darren, you, you're you on the, the, the program tonight. And I, I was saying to someone earlier, I think that you may know, I was saying to someone earlier, I said I, I had BJ uh, on the program on uh, Tuesday, uh, BJ Stagner from Wales, which I believe you know. And yeah. um, and I said, uh, I said, got Darren on tonight. And he said, well, he's proper Welsh. <laughs> so so, so we'll, 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 we, we definitely can tell that from your accent this evening. So. <clears throat> Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your church before we get started. Where, whereabouts are you in? It's Cardiff, isn't it? Correct. We're just uh, just a few miles north of Cardiff in uh, uh-huh. the town of Pontypridd. Yeah. Um, it's just at the start of the the Rhondda Valleys, and it was a church that was born out of the Welsh revival. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's Bethany English Baptist Church because during the turn of the last century, um, the majority of people in Wales spoke Welsh, mm-hmm. and as we had the influx of miners to the area, English-speaking miners, well, they were coming to know the Lord, and they had nowhere to worship because m- the majority of church services were in Welsh. So mm. um, Bethany English Baptist Church formed in 1900, mm. and uh, the building was completed in 1906, and uh, it's still uh, it's still preaching the gospel today. I've been Amen. there for 10 years now. Um, mm. I was an aircraft engineer uh, before the Lord called me into full-time ministry. And uh, we will have been there in 10 years now in uh, in August. So it's been a, a real blessing, exciting to see mm. uh, what the Lord is doing there Amen. and exciting to see um, people growing and uh, coming to know Christ as their Savior, which is, you know, the, the purpose for all that we do. Amen. 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 And I think also, you know, which is quite, quite cool that we're looking at Nehemiah tonight is because um, if there's people out there who are in a, a church that is, you know, perhaps going through hard times, well, Nehemiah, you know, really went back to build up the walls 
and we can liken that to building a church you know the walls have to be built up the work has to be done um but um uh, let's look at verse number one together it says that there was a a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren the jews so perhaps you i'd i'd, I'd I know you know much more about this than I do. So <laughs> perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about these verses here. It's really interesting. I mean, you can see um, three great divisions in uh, in chapter 5. And if you like, it, um, you can split them up into three greats. There's a great cry, verses 1 to 5. There's a great assembly uh, in verses uh, 7 through to 13. And then there's a great testimony um, through the, the closing part of the chapter. And Nehemiah is probably one of my, my favorite books of the Bible, um, you just think of what Nehemiah gave up uh, in order to, to build those walls. You know, he was in the king's the king's house, uh, and you think of what you know what people have given up to serve the Lord. You know, you mentioned BJ. BJ had a, a very successful um, practice of, of medicine back in the states. He was a doctor, and he's come over to serve in the UK. Uh, I know many people who come over from Crown College who, who give up a lot um, to come over here and to, to proclaim the gospel. And you know, Nehemiah just fits that, if you like, that modern-day missionary. He goes back to um, to his homeland. He goes back to, um, because he's got this, this burden and this passion and this desire to see the Lord's work done. Um, but it was great because um, he was faced with opposition. And I think that's a good thing sometimes because it, it really does help. Uh, it helps us to grow in the Lord when you, when you have that opposition. It helps you to, to just rely upon the Lord. And the interesting thing about tonight's message is that You've seen so far that the opposition came from without, from um, Sam Ballot and Tobiah, mm. but now um, the opposition, if you like, comes from yeah. within. Yeah. Um, and it's it's interesting that, you know, if, if the devil can get a foothold within our churches, if he can get um, a division, if he can get a split, then he can cause some real problems. And I think that's, that's what you've started to see here. You know, Nehemiah wasn't going to come down off that wall. Mm. Nehemiah was going to do exactly what God had called him to do. Mm. and no opposition from without was going to stop him. Um, and it's almost as if, if you like, the devil changes tactics then. Yeah. And there's this great cry, and the, the cry was that the people and their wives against their brethren, the Jews, and they cried because, you see, as you said earlier in, uh, in, in, in verse 3, because of the dearth, there was a famine mm. in the land. Yeah. And Nehemiah is faced with, if you like, significant economic crisis. Um, success is about to be prevented because of this economic pressure. There's, if you like, a supply and demand problem. Mm. The demand for food was great. The supply just wasn't there because of this famine. And what people were doing, people were actually mortgaging their lands, their vineyards and their houses just to buy food. Um, and what was happening was they were they were so in debt that they were selling uh, their, their sons and their daughters into slavery and what was happening was they, they could never really repay the debt. Mm. And this is a problem for a number of reasons, because, first of all, the work on the wall stopped. And then, of course, one problem simply led to another. And this is exactly what we see in our lives today. You know, the, I suppose it's the same old problem that we, yeah. we have with, with money today. You know, we, we borrow and borrow and borrow. And if you like, we're robbing Peter and we're still unable to pay Paul. And that's that's how our society works you know we we borrow and that leads to more borrowing and in the end you end up in slavery because you don't really owe anything um i was trying to think who said that you know we we buy stuff we can't afford to impress people we don't really like <laughs> um, and it's always interesting when you fill in a questionnaire and they say do you own your own home and you feel like saying well no not yet i kind of borrow it off nat west for 25 years <laughs> and then hopefully i will own it um and you think about the credit card companies you know they they just yeah. want you to just pay the minimum payment if you have a credit card because they can get more money out of you and, and this is what's happening yeah here but the problem was uh, there was nothing wrong. God had set up, uh, you know, a system of, of being able to, to lend money to one another. But what was happening was, is they'd gone outside mm. the boundaries, if you like, of God's word. They'd gone outside, uh, and they had taken matters into their own hand. So the great cry was because of the famine and because of finances. But then you see this this great assembly. Um, Nehemiah said that uh, he was angry when he heard their cry and these words. And then he consulted with my, I consulted with myself, I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said, 
unto them the exact usury, every one of his brother. And I set a great assembly against them. Mm. And, you know, Nehemiah, he's an amazing leader. I mean, there's lots of Bible characters that I, you know, that I really like. Um, and Nehemiah is one of them. He, was, he wasn't a politician who asked, you know, what is popular. Uh, he wasn't a diplomat who asked what is safe. He was just a true godly leader who asked what is right. And Nehemiah is angry, not because the people were in debt, not because, you know, of the, 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 the family. He was angry because people were not obeying God's word. Uh, like I said, it wasn't wrong to borrow Exodus 22:25. If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him a usurer, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. So it wasn't against God's word to lend money. The problem was is that people were exacting a great, amount of interest from those who were who were struggling mm, mm. and that was wrong that was against mm. god's law and nehemiah says in verse 7 i i consulted with myself and that doesn't mean that he, he took matters into his own hands if you like it um you could say he, he pondered his thoughts or uh, i suppose a modern day uh, phrase would be he literally counted the 10 and um, he was angry he counted the 10 he composed his thoughts and then then he acted. He set a great assembly uh, against them. And it's amazing when, when you look at Nehemiah's wisdom. Mm. He doesn't act on emotion. Um, he thinks it through. His mind has been stirred. He, he takes time to reflect and he thinks before he says anything. And so many times we as Christians get ourselves into so much trouble because we speak without thinking. We, we just say the first thing that's on our mind. And, I, and my pastor always used to say that, that his mum would say to him, um, E.G., you make sure that you were words and soft and tender because mm. tomorrow you might just have to swallow them. Mm. Mm. And it's amazing how Nehemiah just, if you like, cooled down before he acted. He considered things and then he confronted the rulers. And, and that's what I like, you know, this this face-to-face -face confrontation. It's like the spirit of Christ, isn't it, really? I mean, that's, that's oh, the, what the Lord would have done in that situation. He wouldn't have just... I mean, I know in the temple he, he had a righteous anger, and that's what you really see here, I guess, in Nehemiah. Yeah, and it's it's always in relation to God's word. You know, yeah. um, Christ was angry because of what they had done to, to the Lord's house. And it wasn't the fact that, you know, people think, oh, it's because they were they were selling within the temple. It mm. wasn't that. They... You know, there was a system set up in order for, for people to exchange um, money for temple sacrifices. But again, they were um, they were altering the weights. They yeah. were um, charging over the odds. They were providing, you know, substandard animals for sacrifice. And, and it's the same type of thing here. It's, it's, it's contrary to God's word. It's mm. contrary to what um, God has laid out for us in his word. And, and Nehemiah goes straight to the source. Mm, yeah. He goes to the nobles, like Matthew 18 says, if you've got aught with your brother, mm. you go and speak to your brother. Yeah. And Nehemiah didn't go around, you know, all the different gates on the walls where he had different families set up and different people looking after different parts of the walls. And he didn't, you know, turn this um, this person against the rulers and then turn that person against somebody else. And there wasn't that gossiping, there wasn't that tail bearing. He went straight to the rulers. And he says, I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said to them, ye exact usury, you are charging interest to your fellow Jews, you're, you're wrong, you're going against God's word, you sell your brethren, he said in verse 8, mm. you even sell your brethren, mm. um, you are enforcing uh, slavery of the Jews, and Leviticus 25, uh, 38, uh, 35 to 38 said uh, how wrong that was, and he said it is not good that you do, Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen to uh, um, our enemies? Mm. Nehemiah is saying this, look guys, your testimony is terrible. And this lost and dying world who are standing around about these wars, the, the heathen that are around and about are looking at our lives and are looking at our testimonies. And when they see our lives, they see nothing different to the way they live their lives. Mm. And that reflects poorly upon the God that we are meant to serve. Mm. And that's what happens today. You yeah. know, people, mm. people look at the, the Christian's testimony, and we are under a magnifying glass. People do wait for us to slip up, and they do 
weight to pounce upon uh, any um, anything that we do that's wrong. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, as Christians, we give the lost world far too much ammunition. Yeah. And that doesn't just damage our reputations and testimonies and, and the church's testimony, but most importantly, it, it, it damages the Lord's testimony, if you yeah. like. It damages his reputation um, because, you know, we are meant to be, as Paul said, we are meant to be open epistles, to be read of men so that we, that we would point others to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. And Nehemiah, part of Nehemiah's anger is because people are giving the Lord a bad name. They're giving him a, a bad testimony. Mm. Um, and do you know what? Sam Ballot and Tobiah must have been having a, a happy time. Well, yeah, they were having a well of a time, probably, weren't <laughs> yeah. they? Yeah. Because now they spend all of this time trying to, to get Nehemiah to come down off the wall. And you'll see that again now in, in Chapter 6 tomorrow. And, you know, they spend all of this time trying to you know, trying to affect Nehemiah's mm. work. And then all of a sudden, they must have looked at one another and thought, well, they, they're doing no jobs for us. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's why, you know, that's the, a message the, today, the devil must be yeah. over the moon when, yeah. when he sees such strife within mm. the church because, you know, we, we kind of do his bidding for him when, yeah. when there's backbiting and when there's, you know, when there's strife and when there's disunity. And like Paul said in Ephesians, you know, endeavouring to keep that unity uh, within the church. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, and and uh, you know, I think um, this this word uh, urusery here that we find, I mean, it, really, they were just being like loan sharks, you know, just yeah, yeah you know, absolutely, not not, and 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 I think that you know tells us so much about the importance to have a holy, consecrated life to the Lord, you know, that we don't we don't act like the devil Monday to Friday, but on a Sunday we yeah. we we we're, we're just you know everyone's sees us as an angel but you know that's that's a, i mean it's a challenging thing to me um you know i think am i a good testimony for the lord and, and and do i do the right you know right thing and and all that kind of stuff but um i just think i mean you look at the people's heart here and really they they got their eyes off the lord haven't they really that was the thing definitely yeah yeah absolutely and, and oftentimes you know you, they're probably looking at this situation you know mm. there's a famine in the land yeah you know what happened with abraham when abraham took his eyes off the lord at a time of famine, you know, he yeah. went down to Egypt when he sort of stayed where he was. And uh, you look at Peter, you know, when he when he took his eyes off the yeah. Lord, he began to to sink. Yeah. And and I think that's what's happened. They've taken their eyes off the Lord. They've looked at the famine. They've looked at perhaps the uh, the amount of work that is still to be done uh, around the walls of Jerusalem. And you know, they've they they deflate it. Mm. They they take matters into their own hands. And then what you have then is you have people taking advantage of that situation and. Like you said, acting like loan sharks, just yeah. Yeah. in it for what they can get out of it, and you know that's the sad thing today. When uh, you know, when I don't know, it's almost as if people people feel like God owes them something. You know, Christians yeah. feel like, well, well, God owes me, and 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 people seem to be in it for what they can get out of it, rather yeah. than what the Lord wants us to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I often refer to it as, you know, you either see a Galilee Christians or you're Dead Sea Christians. <laughs> you know, the Jordan River yeah. flows into both of them, but it only flows out of one. Yeah. And it's like the Lord has given us so much. So, mm. you know, what, what have we got to give back, as it were? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're not our own. We're bought with a price, you know. Absolutely. You know, and that, that you know, that, that, that truth took me took me a long time to, to really, I mean, you know, being a saved Christian, I knew the Lord as Savior, but it took me a long truth really to understand that, that, you know, my life is not my own, and it, it's the Lord's, and he owns it, he's purchased it with his precious blood, he sought me, he bought me, um, sure. you know, as the hymn says, um, and so, you know, Nehemiah had that, that kind of sense, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the Lord's, we're the Lord's people, you know, what a thing, yeah. what, what a thing to say that I'm, I'm one of the Lord's people, and yet here we are just acting like everyone else. And, Absolutely. you know, uh, but I love the fact here, you know, Darren, I love reading Nehemiah 5 and just realizing that not only was the Lord working by building the wall back up, but he was actually working in his people's lives. And God yeah. is always at work in his people's lives. It's not just about the wall being built, but God reviving his own people. Um, uh, that's it. And, you yeah. know, we're a, I know uh, one of my friends says that, you know, we're a work in progress. And that's yeah. it. We're always, we are a work in progress until, mm. until the Lord returns and, you know, and gives us those glorified bodies. Yeah. And Amen. until that point, you know, he, he continually works on us. Yeah. Um, I know it's that children's song. I, I, I'm not sure if we'd sing it that much over here, but I've, I've heard it in the States, you know, he's still working on me. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah. 
and he is continually. Yeah. You know, we're being shaped and moulded yeah. into the Lord Jesus Christ. And oftentimes, you know, like you see with Nehemiah, he had to go through real difficult trying times on that wall. But that shaped him and moulded him into the person that he was. Yeah. Now, there were other people on the same wall um, doing, if you like, slightly less work than they might have to do. Um, they were both in the same situation, and yet, you know, Nehemiah was able to, to learn from that situation and, and become more Christ-like, while there were others then who, who struggled and, if you like, turned to the world for help. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's interesting what, you know, what the nobles said in, in verse 8. I love their response. Um, Nehemiah, you know, says to them, he tells them what they're doing is wrong. I said unto them, we ask that our ability have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. And will ye even sell your brethren, or shall they be sold unto us? Mm. Listen to their response. Yeah. Then held they their peace yeah. and found nothing to answer. Do you know what? When we come face to face with our sin, we can't justify it. Yeah, that's right. Our mouths, are, our mouths are stopped. You know, and their response says it all. They had nothing to say. Yeah. They knew what they were doing was wrong. They were they were guilty as charged. Yeah. And uh, you know, when oftentimes when when we come under conviction, we try and justify our our sin, and we try and you know alter the words. So well, it's we'll call it a mistake rather than sin, or you know we'll uh, we'll just call it something other than it is. Mm. Um, but when when you come face to face with your sin, there's nothing you can do to justify it. Mm. Uh, and like you say, you know, I understand that that Christ died for our sin, mm. and a lot of people say, oh, you know, praise the Lord, salvation is free. Yes, it's free, but I can promise you this: it wasn't cheap. No, because it cost it cost him everything Amen. upon that cross of Calvary, mm. and you know that. That is the price of sin, mm. um, and their mouths have stopped. They they can't say anything no. because you know they've been they've been caught out, as it were. Yeah. Um, and Nehemiah goes on to say, "It is not good that you do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, mm. our enemy?" He, he, Nehemiah is saying, "Listen, we have to we have to have a good testimony, and since the problem has been identified, we just need to stop it." Um, and, and that's the thing, you know, when we when when a sin is identified in our lives, mm. there's, there's no need to try and justify it. There's no need to try and find a loophole in the Bible to try and <laughs> get around it. Yeah. And say, oh, well, you know, that's okay because, you know, I know the Bible says this, but we just need to stop it. Um, and we need to, to do exactly what the Lord has told us to do. Mm. Um, verse 11, um, Rene, I said, restore mm. I pray you to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, their houses, also the hundredth part of the money and of the corn, the wine and the oil that you exact of them. Mm. And uh, the interesting thing is, is, is when God reveals a sin in our lives, he doesn't say to us, well, take your time, you know, you, you deal with it in your own time, you know, when you're ready, just, just take your time. No. Mm. He says, no, deal with it now. If, if the conviction has come now, then deal with it now. And, and, and Nehemiah says, restore, I pray thee, even this day, right now. You know what you're doing is wrong. Just by your mouth being stopped, you know that you're wrong. Fix it right now and deal with it right now. Mm. And it was only then, only then, once they dealt with it, you know, could they, could they, if you like, praise the Lord. In verse 12, they said, we will restore them and we will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Mm. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. And I took my, I shook my lap and said, So God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not the promise, even thus be shaken he out and emptied. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praise the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. Um, Nehemiah calls the priests, and you you can see, <laughs> you can almost see Nehemiah pointing to the leaders in front of this great assembly and saying, right, now you're making a public oath. Now you're making a public declaration. Now you're making a public promise before God, and you'd better stick to it. Mm. You know, it's interesting when, when we make a promise. If we make a promise to ourselves, sometimes we can keep it, but more often than not, we fail to keep our words. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, if we make that promise about the same thing in front of people or to somebody else, then we're more inclined to follow through with it. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, if we make a promise to God, then we better not think of going back. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of a scripture that says that you, if you vow a vow before God, then you make sure you keep it. Yeah. Um, God doesn't want us to make a promise to him. Yeah. But if we do, then we better be sure that we keep it. And that's what Nehemiah said. I, uh, I, I shook my lap and said, So God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise. And he said, if you've made a promise to God, then you better keep it. Um, I mean, you, you know think, what? yeah, I mean, you think as, as as Christians today, you know, the Lord, as you said, has given so much for us. And his promises are so good and faithful, you know, we should be able to keep a small thing for him, you know, or Absolutely. a big thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you consider, when you consider all mm. that the Lord has done for us, um, yeah. You know, how dare we? Yeah. How dare we feel like that we can do as we please? That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I think it's a, a Gold City song where it, it says that uh, he was willing to die for me, then I should be willing to live for him. Mm. Um, and when you think of all that the Lord has done for us and all, uh, you know, the price that he paid upon the cross of Calvary, then, you know, how dare we give him any less than, than our all? Mm. Um, you know, and the, the hymn says, you know, all to Jesus I surrender. Uh, and he should, we should give him our all. Mm. And it wasn't until that point, it wasn't until they followed through with their promise that only then were they able to praise the Lord. And I wonder sometimes if, you know, if, if in our churches today we, we're not able to praise the Lord as we should because we're not where we ought to be in our walk with the Lord. Mm. Um you know, we, we we kind of just go through the motions of church. And we come along on a Sunday because, you know, that's what we've always done or, you know, it's it's the it's the right thing to do and and I think sometimes I don't know, I think sometimes the Lord must just shake his head at us and think there's so much more to the Christian life and if we did things the Lord's way um, that's what I spoke on in our Bible study last night, you know, in, in Romans 15, where, where Paul said, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And, you know, he talks about us being full of joy and, and peace and hope. And, you know, you look at some Christians today and, and they don't look joyful. Mm. I mean, they, they walk around and they've got a face like a thousand pound parking fine. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, we've got the joy of the Lord. And Amen. I mean, Nehemiah says himself, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes, he does. Yeah. And when yeah. you think of all that Nehemiah has dealt with, you know, externally, outside of the wall and internally within the walls. Mm. And yet the joy of the Lord was still his strength. And if, you know, if Satan can get to our joy, um, you know, if Satan can get us to, to flirt with sin, you know, then uh, then our strength is gone. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and as you said, they could only really praise the Lord when they have made this promise. And um, they said, Amen, which which means, you know, be done so. Praise the yeah. Lord. And the people did according to this promise. You know, yeah. the, the change came. The Lord brought the change. And uh, we need to ask the Lord, really. I think that's, that's what we get from this these few verses here, is that if we're living a life of sin... And we've given ourselves into sin, and we're we're fighting fighting a battle within us, and we'll, we're do, we've done things. You know, there's grace; the Lord will forgive us, but we must get right with Him today, and and, yeah, and get right, right and I, restore ourselves now. Yeah. And I think the problem is, you know, people um, take God's grace, and and you know, I don't mean anything irreverent by this, but they take God's grace too far. Yeah, no, um, no, it's mean. like the the yeah. old saying: it's easier to ask for um, forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. And yeah. we can say, ah, oh, well, you know, God's got to forgive us because, you know, because of 1 John 1, 9 and, you know, he's a forgiving God. And But we put ourselves in such daft positions sometimes yeah. um, that we, we do really take God's grace for granted. And my, again, my pastor used to say about sin, face it, confess it, forsake it. You know, we, we talk about uh, repenting and uh, coming to know Christ as our Savior, repentance towards God, faith in Christ. But... If we keep committing the same sins over and over again, then, you know, there needs to be that repentance where we turn 180 degrees from it. Mm. Um, and, and we do, you know, we, we live our lives 
in accordance with how God wants us to live them. And that's what I love, you know, about Nehemiah. And um, I don't know if we, uh, have we got time to look yeah, at Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, if you, as long as you have time, we have time. <laughs> so, okay, so, well, uh, we don't start church till Sunday, so we've oh, got plenty right? of time. <laughs> <laughs> but you well, see, you know, this is we've seen a great cry and a great yeah. uh, assembly, and now we see a great testimony. You know, Nehemiah's testimony was was just wonderful and he says in verse 14 moreover from the time that i was appointed to be the governor in the land of judah from the 20th year even to the two and 30th year of artaxerxes the king that is 12 years i and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor but the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine beside 40 shekels as fills a yea even their servants bear rule over the people but so did not i because of the fear of god D.L. Moody said, a holy life will produce the deepest impression. Mm. Lighthouses blow no horns, they only shine. Nehemiah, you know, you, you have, have that expression about people who, who took their own horns, and, and Nehemiah wasn't that type no. of Bible character mm. at all. Um, he just shone for the Lord. He found himself in the position of, of governor, mm. and in that position would have had to have made so many decisions, and and I think the greatest decision he made was, you know, was how to conduct himself. Mm. Um, he conducted himself. I, and I think if he had a motto then, um, I think that would have been found in verse 15. But so did not I mm. because of the fear of God. Yeah. And again, one of the problems we have, not, not just in, in the church today, but in our country today, is there's no fear of God. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah. Why are our politicians in the mess they're in? Because they don't fear God. Yeah. You know, why are lo- the laws passed that, are, that have been passed in our country? Because there's no fear of God. Yeah. Um, why is the, does there seem to be such an attack upon Christianity today? Because there's no fear of God. Why, you know, is there, are there churches closing down left, right and centre in our country? Because there's no fear of God. Mm. And that's not, you know, that fear is not being scared of God. Mm. But that's having that reverential fear. Yeah, that, that's right. That, mm. I don't want to say respect because that just, you know, that that is just doesn't describe what it is. You know, people need to recognize God for exactly who he is. Mm. And Nehemiah is promoted to this position mm. of such power. Uh, and he performs, uh, you know, so well in that role because of his fear of God. You think back to Joseph you know, as, you know, effectively second in command of Egypt and, you know, how he, he performed that function mm. because of his fear of God. Mm. Uh, and I think if if we could get that fear of God back in our country today, then, you know, then our country would be would be the, the Christian nation it once was. I think it says um, in, in Proverbs, isn't it, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of yes. knowledge or wisdom. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think too many people today abuse their positions. Mm. You know, we we've got bosses that abuse their positions. Parents yeah. who who abuse the positions that, that God has has placed them in, and and even pastors mm. um, abuse those uh, positions within the church. And you know, they they turn those those roles into something that the Bible never and God never intended them to be. Mm. Uh, but Nehemiah. You know, he realised that there had to be some policies changed because the former governors had, you know, had put these taxes on the people and they'd promoted their own servants to positions of power. And 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 this always amazes me with Nehemiah. He always wanted to do the right thing, and he wanted to do the right thing by God. And what we need to realise, even in our churches today, that doing the right thing is not always the popular thing. Yeah. Um, and, and I think we find that today, you know, that um, I'm sure, you know, with with you guys who in with this gospel crusade that you're doing around the mm. country, I'm sure, you know, that they, you've faced opposition yeah. from doing that. But you know it's the right thing to do, to proclaim the gospel. That's right. But it's not It's not always the popular thing to no. do. No, no, that's right. And, and, and the thing is, at the end of the day, is the Lord is not going to bless us if we just do a performance to please man you know no. that's not what the lord wants us to do but he wants us to truly truly give ourselves to him and 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 do it for him and his sake and i think about john 21 the bible says in john 21 it says um 
you know, about si- uh, Simon Peter. It says, you know, Simon Peter, that lovest thou me? And he was asked three times, why do we do what we do? And we do it because we love the Lord, you know? Yeah. And, and, and that, that's something that's challenged me because it's so easy just to get into a routine and do things because of the, you know, it's the right thing to do, as you say. But Nehemiah did it because he loved the Lord and he wanted, he wanted God's name to be honored and protected. And we don't find that in our country today. You're absolutely right. You know, no, no one cares about the honor of the Lord particularly. No, perhaps. that's right. And we, you know, we try and, we try and make God conform to, to people's views. You know, yeah. we try and, ah, oh, yeah, well, you know, my God wouldn't do this. And if God is a loving God, he wouldn't do that. And, yeah. God, and we try and make him something that he's not. Mm. You know, the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. Mm. Um, the, the Bible says that our God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Mm. Um, and we need to recognize the fact that all we, we do should be for the glory of God. Mm. Um, and, you know, Nehemiah wasn't going to be swayed, even with the position he had. He said, yea, in verse 16, also I continued in the work of this wall. And that was that was his passion. You know, the Lord had laid something upon his heart, build a wall. That's mm. what he was called to do. That's what he promised God he would do. And, you know, he, he could have used that position as governor to furnish his own pockets. He could have used that position to um, further his own goals or his agenda. He could have used it to make a name for himself. But his, his number one priority was pleasing God. Mm. And, um, you know, that's what he did. And he, he built the wall. But... You know, he's got such a great testimony because, you know, he also looked after the people as well. Um, somebody said that the fires in Nehemiah's kitchen never went out because if you look at verse 17 and 18, you look at the people that he fed. Moreover, they were at the, my table 150 of the Jews and rulers beside those that came unto mm. us from among the heathen that are about us. Now that which was prepared for me daily was one ox and six tri sheep. Also fowls were prepared for me, and once in ten days stored of all sorts of wine yet, for all this required not I the bread of the governor, because the bondage was heavy upon this people. Nehemiah looked after um, the people that that mm. uh, were around him. Mm. He had a heart for the people, and, and their needs didn't take second place. Mm. Um, one leader put it this way, the man who is impatient with weakness will be defective in his leadership. The evidence of our strength lies not in striking ahead, but in a willingness to adapt our stride to the slower pace of our weaker brethren, while not forfeiting our lead. If we run too far ahead, we lose our power to influence. Mm. And I think that's why so many people were willing to work upon the wall with Nehemiah. Um, he was such um, a successful leader. You know, he didn't take it all on himself. He, he delegated uh, he do, didn't do it for his own glory. He did it um, for the for the glory of God, and people respected him. They they appreciated all that he did for the Lord and all that he did for them. And as a result, they wanted to work for him. Mm. And he closes out in verse nineteen: "Think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people." Mm. He did what he did to please the Lord. He mm. he didn't want praise. He didn't want reward from the people. He just wanted, uh, you imagine, you know, hearing those words of the Lord, well done, good and faithful servant. And, uh, you know, he, he may never have received a single thank you mm. from the Jews. He, he may never yeah. have, you know, yeah. been appreciated for what he gave up. He may never have been um, thanked for what he did in Jerusalem. But he knew that the final assessment would come from the Lord. He knew that uh, the greatest thanks of all would come from God, and, and it doesn't matter, you know, what mm. what we do for the Lord on here on earth in the time that we have left. Mm. It doesn't matter what we do, if we, if we never get a thank you for what we do, if we, you know, if we're doing it for the praise of men, then, you know, that's the only reward we will ever get. Mm. Um, but if we do what we do for God's glory, to please the Lord, and, you know, if if... We get the glory and hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. You know what? That's worth every mm. ounce of praise of man could offer upon this earth. First Corinthians 4 says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. All of man's judgment, yea, 
I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have mm. praise of God. Mm. What? <laughs> it blows my mind. But mm. one day, you know, we could hear those very words, well done, good and faithful servant. And mm. we could hear those words from the Lord himself. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, and I just love the fact that, you, you know, the way you brought it out tonight, Nehemiah was was doing it for the love of the Lord. You know, he loved the Lord and he wanted the Lord's name to be to be, be honoured. And you really, as you said, you see really a shepherd, a shepherd-like quality in him. You know, really, he was a pastor, wasn't he? Really, with, with these these people, he really loved them and desired that they do the right thing. And um, absolutely, you know, and that's the thing. You know, is uh, the yeah. difference between an eastern shepherd and a western shepherd. You know, a, a western shepherd will drive the sheep, mm. but an eastern shepherd always led the sheep. Mm. Um, you know, the Lord is my shepherd; He leads me to to green pastures. Yeah. He leadeth me beside the still waters, and. Um, Nehemiah just led his people. He, he didn't say, you know, oftentimes it, it tickles me when, you know, perhaps you, you go and see a, a doctor who's slightly overweight and he tells you that, you know, you, you, you need to look after your health and you need to lose weight. And you think, well, you're just saying, you know, don't do as I do, do as I say. <laughs> That's right. And yet Nehemiah yeah. is yeah. basically saying, don't do as I say, do as I do. Yeah. yeah. He's leading by example and, yeah. and, and like you say, you know, that. That's a wonderful example of of a pastor, of of a, a shepherd, yeah. and uh, you know it it is just I don't know he's he's an inspiring character yeah. uh, Nehemiah because he was doing a work for the Lord, and I suppose whenever you're doing a work for the Lord, you can always count on problems, you can mm. always count on opposition, and sometimes those attacks come from without, mm. and sometimes those attacks and that opposition comes from within, but you know Nehemiah. He just he just faced those problems head on. He didn't bury his head in the sand hoping it'll all go away. Um, the problems that were caused by sin, he confronted them head on. If they were sin to be confessed, he made sure that they were confessed. And uh, I suppose every problem that we bury just allows the roots to grow deeper and it gets harder to to, to, to pull them out, as it were. Um, and just, Nehemiah just, just committed everything to the Lord and, and I suppose whenever we face problems all we need to do is, is see in those problems an opportunity to draw closer to the Lord mm. um, if we try and you know solve the problems ourselves then we're just going to get ourselves into to more and more mm. mess but if mm. we continually rely upon the Lord mm. you know then we allow the Lord to, to, to work in our lives and we you know we see the Lord work far greater than uh, and, and, and solving those problems than, than we could ever hope to achieve yeah. um, and it's just amazing you know there's there's a work to do today um, there's, there's 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 walls to be built if you like um, mm. you know there are churches to be built up there are people who need to, to know Christ as their saviour and there's so much to do and we face the sandbars and, and Tobias in the world today those who stand outside the walls telling us to come down we're wasting our time we're hypocritical you know we're, um, we're not doing any good and we also, you know, face the problems from within because, you know, sin does have a way of of, of creeping into people's lives. But all we got to do is preach the word, please the Lord, and just, uh, you know, leave the rest to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for, for, for going through that with us tonight. And uh, we've, we've, I've enjoyed that. It's been such a blessing to me. Um, and I, I pray that, you know, we would be, all of us would be like Nehemiah, you know, and give ourselves to the Lord and there's so much in it for this passage for us and it's so easy just, isn't it just to read the old testament and think oh what bad people they were but then really you've got to think about it and think well actually i'm just like that you know yeah. <laughs> i'm i'm just the same and i just have the same problems although i might not have uh the same words that they use and i might not have the same food that they eat, or whatever it might be or the, the same struggle that they're having I, i'm just as selfish towards other people and uh, you know my walk with the Lord is not as it should be, and so uh, I'm I'm encouraged by that. So thank you so much for, the Lord. for 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 being with us tonight, and and uh, we'll be praying for your church, and in, uh, in in Wales that the Lord will bless it, and 
um, keep it keep it going and praise the Lord that it's preaching the gospel. So a hundred and something years you were saying at the beginning of the program. Like yeah, that. it was uh, 1900 the, the church was actually wow. formed. So yeah. uh, it's uh, what a testimony. 16 mm. years in July that it's uh, it's been proclaiming the gospel and it's still yeah. it's still going. So praise the Lord for that. Mm. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we've been praying praying for you and you know no doubt as a pastor you face many situations like nehemiah so so, so i'm sure he brings a lot of comfort for you so it's, it's good it's, it's wonderful reading the lord lord's word so uh, we'll have a lovely evening uh, darren and thank you so much again for being with us tonight and um we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon no problem thanks for having us on again no time. problem no problem god bless take care now okay, god bless thanks bye-bye bye there we go there's darren there from um, bethany baptist church in wales and he was reading there from the book of Nehemiah chapter 5. And that was a good study tonight. I hope you enjoyed that study of Nehemiah chapter 5. We'd love to hear from you this evening. If you have questions or comments about that, then do get in contact with us. The following ways are studio at tfcradio.com or you can send us a message via uh, our mobile device 07943 762025.